Qatar has surprised me with a wide range of great experiences you can have in just 48 hours. The desert state of Qatar is selling itself, gearing up for the World Cup. For me, it says the kind of progress a country has made in such a short space of time. But beneath the polish are claims of brutality and even torture suffered by a British man hired to advertise Qatar to the world. He was subjected to mental and physical torture. So they were telling him that he would never see his family again. Arrested and imprisoned, Mark Bennett was later found dead in a hotel room. Tonight, his wife Nancy tells Channel 4 News why she may never know what really happened after her husband was detained in Qatar. Mark would not take his own life. Everybody has said this. That boy would not take his own life. I'm Mark Bennett. I'm the senior vice president for Discover Qatar. Mark Bennett, a leading tourism and travel expert, was headhunted to run Discover Qatar, a promotions company linked to the state-run airline Qatar Airways. He loved his job. He's loved he his yes. job in the travel industry. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He was the perfect person to go in and set up Discover Qatar. Welcome to a place just waiting to be discovered. Mark set up a successful marketing campaign. Of inland seas and pristine beaches. But his efforts were hampered by an escalating row between Qatar and its neighbours, which saw the country blockaded. Qatar has denied Saudi accusations that it supports terror groups as five Arab states slapped on a travel ban and cut diplomatic ties. With military tensions building and flights grounded, Mark found working in the country increasingly difficult. With his family in the UK, he eventually asked his bosses if he could relocate here, but they refused. So in September 2019, Mark resigned, telling Qatar Airways he'd been offered another job by a Saudi-linked company. His wife says he left amicably, with the offer of a new venture with Qatar in the future. So they saw no reason to worry when Mark was asked to return to the country to finalise some paperwork. He said for the sake of the relation, the future relations, he would absolutely go back and just see what they needed from him. But events didn't unfold as expected. There were days of delays and Mark decided to go home. Nancy says he was called on the way to the airport and asked to go to Qatar Airways HQ. Waiting for him were Qatari security officials concerned that he'd sent confidential emails to a personal account. He was led out of the building. He was handcuffed and blindfolded and then put in a car and taken to a detention centre. And what do you know about what happened at the detention centre? He was subjected to mental and physical torture. It was very much based on um, who had approached Mark from the Saudi company, um, when they had met, where did they meet, how many times have they met, what are you taking to them? Yeah, that mental torture that he spoke to me about. Um, and it was all based around the Saudis, um, that questioning, um, which he had nothing, there was nothing to give them. There was a point I didn't, it, when Mark was in the interrogation room they were telling him that he would never see his family again. An unnamed friend has said that he spoke confidentially about physical torture as well. Are you able to talk to us about that? Do you know what, Cathy, I'll be honest with you, I block that out. I have yeah. been told, but I don't want to sit here talking about it because actually, I don't know if I get it 100% right because I don't like that in my head. But Mark did tell one friend who wrote a signed statement. And it is deeply disturbing. He told his friend that at the detention centre, he was stripped naked and sprayed with a high power hose. He was woken every one to two hours and interrogated. At one point, he was slammed against a wall and interrogators screamed things like, you're taking our stuff to Saudi. He slept on the floor. This went on for several days, 
but still Mark stuck to his story. Mark was then moved to a more comfortable detention centre where he was held for three weeks. He was allowed to call me. I didn't recognise his voice when he called, I have to say. I had to ask who it was because I did not recognise his voice. Um, Why was that? He was so hoarse. Uh, just, uh, just, it was just not Mark speaking. He was visited by British consular officials and instructed a lawyer. But on the 10th of November, he was suddenly released. He was made to sign a form stating he wouldn't leave Qatar. He was handed a post-it note bearing a telephone number, which he was instructed to call once he'd established where he would be staying. His passport, laptop, mobile phones and iPad were not returned. No charges were brought, but Mark wasn't allowed to leave. He moved into an apartment at the Curve Hotel in Doha, waiting in legal limbo. Had a party to go to on Christmas Eve. He went and got a haircut. Um, I would always text Mark to say that I was up. So I did that Christmas Eve in the morning. Um, and then I didn't get a response. So I phoned the Foreign Office on Christmas Eve in the afternoon just to say that I was worried. We did have Christmas Day, but it wasn't until Christmas night that we found out. Mark was discovered in an apartment similar to this one. The Qatari police report says he was found hanged. It says there was no trace of violence. But in this country, the coroner refused to record a conclusion of suicide. There was no evidence, she said, to show an intent to take his own life. The room didn't make sense. He had his clothes that he was going to wear to the party. They were laid out. Um, it had been washing, his gym kit was on an era. Um, and it was just the bed. The bed was cover turned back, actually a pillow folded as to how he would always have a pillow with a book placed down, ready to be picked up and read again. There was no note, nothing was left. There's a coffee cup. There was food. It was honestly as if there had been a knock at the door. You put your book down, you go and open the door, and then you'd go back to reading your book. I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. And why are you so convinced, and his friends so convinced, his family so convinced that he wouldn't take his own life? What, what was it about Mark? You know, because he was always looking to the future. And that kind of person, that gregarious, loving family man, wouldn't take his own life? No. The government of Qatar told us the state of Qatar categorically denies allegations of mistreatment in its detention facilities, and it specifically denies the allegations made by Channel 4. All detainees are treated with respect and dignity in accordance with international standards. Qatar regularly opens its detention facilities for inspection from independent human rights observers and international organisations. Qatar Airways say Mark was a valued and popular colleague. They say they reported Mark to the authorities after discovering he had forwarded confidential emails to a private email address without authorisation. They insist they had no role in his treatment after his arrest and that they ended correspondence with Nancy after differences over whether financial compensation was due. Within weeks, Qatar will show its best side to billions watching the World Cup. Nancy hopes that by speaking out, she might prompt viewers to question the glossy image as she continues to seek answers herself about what really happened to the man she married.